the 13th president. Surprise! It's me again, Miss Wendell from Glen Allen. Um, I just talked to you about our 12th president, Zachary Taylor, who died in office, and I'm back to talk about number 13, the guy who replaced him, is Vice President Millard Fillmore. Millard Fillmore is our 13th president. I think Millard Fillmore has one of the coolest names of all the presidents. Uh, I don't know, maybe the teachers who are going to talk about Ulysses or Grover after me will disagree, but Millard Fillmore, that's got to be up there, right? Uh, Millard Fillmore is kind of a forgettable president, to be honest with you, but there is one big important thing that happens during his presidency. President Fillmore is in office, and he's the one who actually signs the different pieces of the Compromise of 1850 into law. This is the antebellum era, the time period leading up to the Civil War. So there are parts of the Compromise of 1850 that are designed to make Northerners in free states happy. There are also parts of the Compromise of 1850 that are designed to make slave owners in the Southern slave states happy too. So let's talk about these parts. My APO students better know all this already. Uh, the first part of the Compromise of 1850, California is admitted to the Union as a free state. No slavery in California. Uh, obviously, that's the part that's going to make Northerners happy. Another part that will make Northerners happy, within the Compromise of 1850, they abolish the slave trade in the city of Washington, D.C. So both of those parts are designed to keep the free states happy, but there are parts that, again, are going to appease the southern states. For example, another part of the Compromise says that the new territories acquired after the Mexican-American War, like Utah and New Mexico territories, they will use popular sovereignty to decide the issue of slavery. All that means is the people who live in these territories get to vote about whether they're going to be free or slave territories. So Southerners like that because it's potential for more slave states. The last and probably the most infamous part of the Compromise of 1850 is a strengthening of the fugitive slave laws. Um, and this basically made it a crime uh, to help any escaped enslaved person who had run away to a free state. Um, it made it a criminal act to not turn them in or to help them hide or help them get away um, from the people who owned them in the slave states. So that certainly is something that the slave owners in the South liked because it protected um, their ownership of these people. Miller Fillmore, like I said, isn't really famous for much else, but because he signed uh, this strengthening of the fugitive slave laws into effect, it sparks the publication of a book that's probably more famous than President Fillmore himself. It's by a lady named Harriet Beecher Stowe. It's called Uncle Tom's Cabin probably heard of that one, um, that really exposes the atrocities about slavery to people um, in the North who maybe weren't aware of just how bad it was. So even if you don't know much about Miller Fillmore, I bet you know about Harriet Beecher Stowe.